Hello, everyone. My name is Evelyn May, Senior Product Strategy Manager for Oracle Transportation and Global Trade Management Cloud. Hello, I'm Mark Hornick with Oracle Machine Learning Product Management. Hi, I'm Yasha Pushak, Senior Member of Technical Staff on the AutoMLX team at Oracle Labs. Today, we're going to talk about automated machine learning and explainability. The traditional data science pipeline is where you have a machine learning problem that you need to solve. You give your data set to a data scientist and you ask them to train a model for you. While they're doing this, they have a bunch of questions they need to solve. For example, which model should they use? Are their features any good? And which hyperparameter setting should they use? When it comes time to using the model, there are a bunch of additional questions. For example, should you trust it? Did it learn the right thing? Is it fair? Or does it meet some regulatory requirements? Automated machine learning and explainability seeks to make all of this easy for you to use. You simply give us a data set, we'll automatically select the best model for you, optimize its hyperparameters, and then return a fully trained model. On top of this, we provide explanations to give you insights into what your model has learned. First, let's talk about automated machine learning. We focused on giving you an easy to use interface. You simply import the pipeline, initialize it, and then pass the data set. From there, you're good to go. You can make some predictions. We do this by breaking the problem down into a series of steps. Traditional automated machine learning uses what's called combined algorithm selection and hyperparameter configuration. This is just a big fancy way of saying that they try to solve the entire problem all at once, whereas we break it into individual, easier to solve steps. And then once we've solved one, we don't go back to it. Let's take a look at an example. For algorithm selection, there are a bunch of different machine learning methods out there that can be used to solve your problem. Depending on your data set and task, different methods perform best. So we need to find the best machine learning model for your data set. Each of these models also have a bunch of hyperparameter settings that can additionally impact how well they perform. Traditional automated machine learning seeks to find the best model and hyperparameters all together in one go. As you can imagine, this is a large number of options for them to choose between, which means that they can take a while to find the right answer. We break this into a two-step process. We've done a bit of lightweight meta learning so that we can identify strong, high quality default parameters that we can use. We then evaluate each of these algorithms a single time using these default hyperparameters. Once we've done this and found the best model for your data set, we later fine tune the hyperparameters to get you optimal performance. We've also done some work to improve the running time. Here, this is all about adaptive data reduction. First, we do adaptive sampling, where we're trying to identify the optimal number of rows of your training set that we should use to train our model. So in this case, the, we simply start off with a small data set, and then we just keep increasing the data set size using a larger and larger sample of your data set until we observe that the performance is not improving with your model. Once we've done that, we know we've got a good amount of data. Next, we do feature selection. It's the same idea, but this time trying to reduce the number of features in your data set. This can not only improve the running time, but sometimes it even also improves the accuracy of your model by reducing overfitting. We did a comparison against two other state-of-the-art AutoML solutions, H2O and Auto Scikit Learn. On the left, what we're showing is the accuracy, the ranking of all of the different methods across different time budgets. Smaller is better here. So you can see that between 10 minutes to 60 minutes, we're finding better solutions on average across a bunch of different data sets. On the right, what we're showing is the quality of the models for the final 60 minute training budgets. In this case, again, accuracy is uh, smaller is better. So what you can see is that we're finding better results across the different data sets at 60 minutes. Overall, we're seeing that we're about three and a half to four times faster and we're finding better scores. But what do you do once you have that model? Well, that comes down to explainability. So here again, we focused on providing you with an easy to use interface. You simply import the explainer, pass it your trained model and data set, and then we provide you with a bunch of different explainers that you can use to understand what it's learned. Let's talk first about feature importance. We use the Titanic data set as an example, where we're trying to predict whether or not a passenger has died or survived the Titanic. On the left, we're showing the global or model level feature importance. So this corresponds to the overall importance of the features. In this case, what we can see is that sex is the single most important feature for the Titanic data set. In fact, the interpretation here is that if the data set or if the model didn't have data set, didn't have the sex in the data set, 
the accuracy would decrease by about 15%. On the right, we're seeing local or prediction level feature importance. So here, this is saying that this is a third class passenger who is female. Now the fact that the model knew that the passenger was third class means that it decreased their probability of survival by about 30%. And the fact that it knew they were female means that it increased their probability of survival by about 22%. Overall, the model wasn't very sure for this person. It gave them about 50-50 odds of survival. We can also dig deeper to look into how the features are actually changing the model's predictions on average. And we get that with partial dependence plots. On the left here, you can see an example for a continuous feature, age. The smaller the feature values, the younger the person, the more likely the model leaves they'll survive. On the right, you can see a categorical partial dependence plot. So this is for the sex feature. Here we show it as a bar plot. So you can see again that women are more likely to survive in this case. We can also do this for more features. Traditionally, this is done as a heat map, as you see over on the left. But we've improved this to show you as two different lines on this plot, which you can see on the right, which makes it easier to use. This figure is, again, very easily and automatically generated for you. All you have to do is ask us to explain the age and sex features, the two most important features to the model. We can even go up to three features or four features. These figures get quite a bit more detailed, but you can get some very interesting information out of them now. For example, take a look at this pink line on the left here. What this is telling us is that women who have a large number of siblings or spouses on board are actually predicted to be more likely to survive if they're older than if they're younger. Now, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Quite likely, this is because there's no training data that looks like this in the training data set, which you can see up at the top there. Automated machine learning and explainability has a large number of features, and I've just covered a few of them here. We support classification and regression, as well as anomaly detection and forecasting. If you have a standard metric that you want us to optimize for, we can do that. But if you have a particular metric that corresponds to your business use case, we can optimize for that as well. We support all of the most popular algorithms, including LightGBM, XGBoost, and feedforward neural networks. We can work with different kinds of data, tabular, text, and time series, and we have a bunch of different explanation options for you as well. If you'd like to learn more about automated machine learning and explainability and what you can do with it, you can check out some of our other sessions at Oracle Cloud World, where you can learn about how to detect the health of our oysters or how to improve healthcare with AutoML. We've also got a session where you're trying to predict the location of watercraft vessels using AutoML. And finally, we have another session that talks about our unsupervised anomaly detection pipeline. Automated machine learning and explainability is available in a variety of Oracle platforms, for example, Oracle Autonomous Database, which we're going to talk about more in a minute, and as well in Oracle Transportation Management. We also have AutoMLX available through Oracle Cloud Infrastructure's data science platform, MySQL Heatwave, and of course on Oracle's always free cloud services. Awesome. Thanks, Yasha. And I will take it over from here. Uh, can you please go to the next slide? Okay, so Oracle Transportation and Global Trade Management Cloud is a best-in-class trade and transportation platform. The application helps customers plan and execute transportation logistics so as to reduce cost, minimize emissions, and improve on-time performance of deliveries. We have received many requests from our customers about leveraging machine learning to intelligently predict shipment transit times based on the actual shipping histories, as well as real-time events in their networks. And after careful design and evaluation, we have chosen the auto ML algorithms developed by Oracle Labs as the central piece of our solution. The auto ML algorithms give customers ability to train a model based on their own data, which reflects the intricacies of their own shipping network. This level of flexibility is very impressive. Next slide, please. And coming to the actual use case of machine learning, our solution has two main pillars. One 
is the ability to predict an estimated time of arrival or ETA during the shipment planning process so that before a shipment departs, the transportation planner has early access to a predicted arrival time at the destination. And then the second pillar is after the shipment departs. So after the shipment leaves the source location and while it is traveling to its destination, the GPS updates and milestones feed into machine learning and machine learning repredicts and refines the ETA uh, with increasing amount of accuracy. A key highlight of our solution is the ability for a business user who may or may not have any data science background to configure and train a machine learning model. The only thing that the user needs to do is to specify all the model configurations on the OTM application UI, and then the backend pipeline will take care of data cleaning and pre-processing. And eventually, the auto ML algorithm builds a model uh, which finds the optimal hyperparameters using um, this particular customer's data. The next slide, please. We have evaluated our algorithms using real world data contributed by a wide variety of customers. So here on the uh, right hand side, uh, the machine learning predicted ETA accuracy, uh, accuracy was able to consistently outperform the baseline accuracy by a significant margin. And on the next slide, if you go to the next slide, customers have deployed machine learning in OTM um, and customers who deployed machine learning have seen encouraging results. So in this presentation, this customer, Western Digital, mentioned they were able to improve ETA accuracy from 64% to 93%. And this improvement helps the customer deliver an even more outstanding uh, experience to their end consumers. And next slide, please. This is the most familiar UI to a business user. So here you can see that the machine learning predictions are easily accessible. Um, users configure alerts and also take actions using standard workflows and agents. Next slide, please. So hopefully I have shown you enough validation of our um, technical approach solution quality and user experience. So for the next steps, we have a very strong product roadmap. First of all, we will enhance the existing ETA prediction capability. Uh, also add machine learning to our core optimization algorithms. And on top of it, we plan to leverage the explainability feature mentioned by Yasha earlier. So the goal here is twofold. First, as a transportation manager, I want to know um, if a shipment is predicted to experience delay, what is the one thing I can change to bring the shipment back on time? And then the second goal is for the users just to better understand the model. Overall, which factors are causing the model to predict a longer or a shorter lead time. We're very excited about our collaboration with Oracle AutoML. With that, I will pass the mic to Mark. Okay, thanks Evelyn. So I'd like to share how we are leveraging the AutoML functionality that you've been hearing about in this session. When we talk about AutoML for Oracle Machine Learning, we're focusing on the scalable in-database algorithms that are in the core of the database software. So let me start off with a brief overview of a few components from the OML product family. Oracle Machine Learning supports interfaces for machine learning in the database for three popular data science languages, SQL, R, and Python. 
OML for SQL provides a SQL interface to the in-database algorithms, which keeps data under database control, eliminating the need to extract data to separate machine learning engines, enhancing security while reducing complexity and latency. The resulting models are first-class database objects that can be used immediately in SQL queries. Now, OML for Py and OML for R are the Python and R language interfaces. And these allow you to manipulate database tables and views using familiar functions and syntax, while also exposing the in-database algorithms using native APIs. Now, these also support integrated deployment of user-defined R and Python functions. And OML for Py supports AutoML from a Python API. Now, for interaction with Autonomous Database, we provide the managed OML Notebooks environment with SQL, PLSQL, Python, R, and Markdown interpreters. The same notebook can contain paragraphs using each language, allowing users to choose the most effective language for a given task. And notebooks can also be shared and versioned, as well as scheduled to run automatically. Oracle Machine Learning AutoML UI is a no-code user interface that automates the model building, selection, and deployment process. And Oracle Machine Learning Services is a RESTful service for model deployment and management. OML Services supports lightweight scoring for real-time use cases in applications and dashboards. So let's look at the two components that support AutoML in more detail, OML for Pi and the AutoML user interface. OML for Pi provides a Python API for automated algorithm and feature selection and automated model tuning and selection using the in-database algorithms. Users benefit from the intelligence baked into the AutoML process, but they can also explicitly augment the hyperparameter search space with custom values. The resulting machine learning models can be used for scoring from our Python API but for deployment, users can also take advantage of scoring using SQL queries with the prediction operators. Users can score data for real-time use cases by deploying them to OML services with REST endpoints. Now, switching to the AutoML user interface, this accelerates projects with AutoML from a no-code user interface. So non-experts and non-coders can easily build models, but it also supports data scientists' productivity to quickly see which algorithms have the most promise given the data. Now, the AutoML UI allows users to generate editable notebooks for selected models that show the specific hyperparameters chosen by AutoML using the OML for Pi API. And like OML for Pi, models can be used immediately from SQL, but also easily deployed to OML services with just a few clicks. So let's see a brief demonstration of the Oracle Machine Learning AutoML user interface. We'll show creating and running an experiment, deploying a model to OML services, and generating a notebook and viewing its contents. Now we're looking at the OML user interface on Autonomous Database. Under the quick actions, we'll click AutoML to see our list of experiments. And then we'll create a new experiment. And we'll call it wine test. We'll select the wine uh, data set in our user schema. We then select the column that we want to predict. And in this case, that column is named target, making this a classification problem which is determined automatically from the column data type and cardinality. And we can optionally specify other settings, like the number of top models we'd like tuned, the autonomous database service level, and even the algorithms we'd like to try. And we see the features with our selected target. Now, next, we can click Start with either faster results or better accuracy. Faster results chooses fewer pipeline combinations to try, while better accuracy explores a broader search space. We see the progress bar with the steps the UI will go through. Now we're in the algorithm selection phase. You'll notice the algorithm selected for this experiment. AutoML will return the top model for each algorithm.
Now it's completing the workflow steps, showing the sorted list of models by the chosen metric. We show additional metrics that are automatically computed for each model. And we can inspect individual model results, like the set of predictors used, their algorithm-specific importance, as well as the confusion matrix. Next, we can select the model we want to deploy to OML services. By specifying the URI, in this case, wine test one, the version of this model, one, the namespace demo to organize our models, and whether we want to share this model with others. Having clicked OK, our model is quickly available for use from OML services via REST endpoints. We'll open the models page and switch to the deployments tab and filter on wine. We see the model metadata. and clicking the URI, the Open API specification. Let's return to the experiment. Just as easily, we can select our top model and generate an OML for Pi based notebook that includes the hyperparameters selected for the tuned model. We'll open the notebook, which contains the OML for Pi code to build the selected model. We'll look at the interpreter binding settings and select the service level. We'll run the first paragraph to see the experiment metadata that generated this notebook. Here we see the predictors that were selected by AutoML. And we have the settings or hyperparameters used to build the model. The notebook also includes code to make predictions using this model from Python. And that brings us back to our experiments listing. So I'd like to highlight the use of AutoML in two contexts, enabling enterprises to solve key business problems more easily and enabling users of Oracle applications. First, we'll consider a major APAC chemical manufacturing company's use case. Their goal is to predict the prices of raw materials with a multi-month lead time. The ML results are compared with human predictions, and their goal is to minimize human judgment bias using machine learning to predict price trends. With AutoML, they were able to achieve 90% forecast result accuracy. Many Oracle applications products use Oracle machine learning. On the roadmap for Oracle Fusion Analytics Warehouse with AutoML, the primary objective is to empower a range of personas, including business users, citizen data scientists, and integrators to enable machine learning use cases with minimal input and just a few mouse clicks within the FAW framework. Fusion Analytics Warehouse users benefit by having simpler interfaces that abstract away end-to-end -end machine learning complexities in the modeling process and can result in shorter development timelines. So I encourage you to check out these other OML-related sessions at CloudWorld, including one exploring AutoML, hype versus value, and what's next on the roadmap for Oracle Machine Learning. So thank you for joining us to learn about AutoML at Oracle today. And if you have questions, feel free to contact us. Enjoy the rest of the conference.